The Thabo Mbeki Foundation and UNISA hosts their International Women's Day Dialogue themed Women, Technology, Innovation and Food Security. The objective is to take a critical look at how technology is being created and used by women to enhance food production and to improve access to healthy food. For more, we're joined by Thabo Mbeki Foundation Chair Geraldine Fraser Moliketi. Mrs. Uh, Fraser Moliketi, good evening to you and welcome. It's lovely to have you on our program. Thanks. Uh, good to be here this evening and good to join you and your, your uh, viewers. Yeah. So food security is a critical goal. And, you know, if you look right across the continent, you see so many people on the move. Millions of children have been displaced. A lot of people um, have been, you know, ha have been forced to move from their homes and cities because of war or, or drought or famine. How can technology be a useful tool in terms of have, helping people connect to access for food? So I'd like to agree with you that uh, it's said that at least one out of every five Africans go to bed uh, hungry. And this was a global report on food crises. The whole issue of use of technology is how technologies could be brought to bear to take into account the realities that we have, whether it is with respect to drought or climate change at this point in time. And there has been a fair amount of work done. And one of such is through a program that's called Technology for African Agricultural Transformation. It's been spearheaded essentially by the African Development Bank, but this program itself targeted women across the continent in the use of technologies. And in Tunis, uh, Tunisia, there's uh, a university, an agricultural university, that's brought on board younger women, interestingly, who had developed drone technology that assists both in determining uh, um, uh, the whole issue of what's required from the perspective of fertilizers to a point of pests around food. And it's led to increased food production. On the other hand, you have countries such as Ethiopia in the Horn of Africa. We can look at the Sudan and so on, also impacted by drought. And here they've looked at uh, developing seeds for wheat that is more heat and drought resistant. So this is where technologies come into play. But the big issue for us is to look at women who are involved in agriculture and farming and ensuring that they are part of the solution, but that they also benefit from the dividend that technology presents. And our discussion, our meeting tomorrow, is bringing on board um, women and scientists who've been involved in agricultural research and have an understanding of this. And our speaker this year is uh, Wanjiru Kamau Rutenberg. She had, um, in essence, set up a network of African women in agriculture research and development. And they had done extensive work across the continent based in Nairobi. So she'll be our, uh, our keynote speaker. And in addition to her, we'll also have two panels. And on those panels, we bringing people from academia, from business, um, in, uh, who will engage in this discussion. And last but not least, the opening, uh, uh, well, the welcome will be done by the UNISA Vice Chancellor, who's clearly a center, a key player, along with the Tabu Mbeki Foundation mm. in the International Women's Day. You know, really exciting to, to hear you share some of the innovations that are already manifest and these partnerships that women are engaging in to build a network of resilience and support for each other. 
It's on the partnerships that I want to focus next. You know, partnerships across cultures and countries present a unique and impactful opportunity to harness diversity and to ensure that, you know, the best is represented. But one of the, one of the enduring issues is access to those networks, access to mentorship, access to opportunities. How truly accessible are these partnerships? And for those who are wanting to get in on this action, uh, how can they? Well, I mean, firstly, they can reach out to the Tabumbeki Foundation because I believe that we have a catalyzing role on uh, in South Africa and across the continent where we are able to reach out to various uh, partners. I mean, one such example is that um, we will also have WIPO forming part of our Women's Day uh, celebration tomorrow. This is the World um, Intellectual Property Organization because in many instances, and let's just think of rooibos tea, mm. women are involved in various indigenous, uh, working with indigenous plants and indigenous crops, but don't really know how to ensure that uh, these are patented, and that's WIPO's role. Uh, a second issue is that we are bringing Cisco on board as well, and Cisco will be bringing some players who have been beneficiaries in the use of technology. So these are but examples of partnerships where we hope that we'd be able to use technology as well to bring women together. Because at the end of the day, women also have access to phones, whether, and it's not only smartphones, we're also looking at Androids. And yeah, I think the big challenge to us and the big tech players is how do we create apps and platforms that will ensure accessibility to the ordinary woman, whether she's in a remote rural area or she's in a peri-urban area or in a city for that matter. Um, and there are instances where it's happened and we will look at our best to take this forward. Well, I know that the physical or the in-person event is oversubscribed. So for those who didn't, you know, get the early bird special, they've missed out. But they can still follow the conversations uh, online. I think it's a critical conversation, as you say. A lot of leading lights in the tech space, particularly when it comes to food security, will be there. Um, Mrs. Uh, Geraldine fraser Moliketi, before I let you go, just a final question. You know, South Africa is... Um, in, in a state where we're dealing with multiple challenges at the same time. And we've had a cabinet announcement last week on uh, a reshuffle cabinet. And I just wanted to, to hear after, and, and you know, you have been in government for many, many years in different portfolios, um, your perspective on whether this is the cabinet to turn South Africa around at this critical juncture uh, with the convergent challenges around load shedding. We've just had a, a, a downgrade grade notice again today, the appointment hopefully of an electricity minister that's going to turn things around? Let me say this is cabinet we have. And the cabinet has the responsibility to ensure that they work and step up to the challenge required. It is going to be quite challenging um, looking at the way in which the portfolios have been split up because monitoring and evaluation typically should not be a standalone ministry, but should be located within the Treasury, the Department of Public Service and Administration, working very closely with the center of government. But I'm sure that minister will look at how she will overcome this particular issue. A second issue is that we've seen the energy portfolio sort of spread over three ministers. Um, they will have to tread the delicate line and balance of looking at how best to coordinate and use those three portfolios to ensure that we resolve the problem of energy and ESCOM. We don't have an option. There's a huge responsibility on cabinet. The public service must uh, step up because at the end of the day, the majority of South Africans don't have the option to opt out 
for private uh, services. They need a functioning public service and state. So over the next 14 months, the big challenge is to make things work, to overcome inequality, to create jobs, to resolve the ESCOM challenge, to uh, really rebuild our infrastructure, deal with the challenges around water, sanitation, deal with logistic challenges around uh, transport. So we have the cabinet we have, they need to deliver. All right, well, let's see. Let's see what happens. Uh, we are all in this together. We're all in the same boat. So, so hopefully it will be steered um, to safer shores where there, there is electricity, um, chief among them. Thank you for your time for, uh, with us this evening. And of course, that debate or that um, gathering is happening tomorrow. It is um, a co-partnered event in association with the Tabo and Becky Foundation and UNISA, the chair of the foundation there, Geraldine Fraser-Moliketti.